Afternoon GMBN Techers. Uh, I've got a bit of free time on my hands, so I'm just gonna service my pedals and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Uh, whilst at it, we're also gonna show you how to service some other types of pedals. So I'm gonna do Crank Brothers, but we're also gonna look at some Shimano's and another set of random flats, whatever I've got tucked away. And seeing as this is a bit of a vlog, well, we better start with the coffee, hadn't we? Okay, well, let's get cracking, shall we? Into the workshop, into the back cave, into the man cave, into the bike cave. Okay, so as I mentioned, I've got a set of pedals I've been using all winter and they've started to get a little stiff and a little baggy. Uh, it's gonna happen with the amount of water we had coming out of the sky. The trails were absolutely hideous, as I'm sure you'll have seen me riding in some of the recent videos on GMBN Tech. Now that we're not riding, it's a perfect time to sort these pedals out. They're kind of been niggling at me. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, but also to make things a bit more rounded, I'm gonna show you on some Shimano pedals and let's say the Eastern Flatboy pedals, which are absolutely ancient. Um, there's three different style pedals, all using the same fundamental system. They're all using an axle, they're all using bearings, and they're all using a body. That's all we need to really know about pedals. The only difference with the clip-in style pedals is they have retaining jaws on the outside. We'll get to that in the details. Okay, so this is the Crank Brothers Mallet E, as you can see there. It's an enduro or trail style clipless pedal. It looks like the downhill pedal, but it's a bit more compact. It has a chrome molly axle. The bearings sit into the actual body itself. And the reason for that is because it allows a retention system to rotate around the middle. The pedal splits into two parts and I'm gonna be replacing the bearings in both sides. Now this one is a Shimano SPD pedal. This one is a Shimano Dior XT. It's one of the trail orientations. The regular version doesn't have these wings on the outside. Now, unlike the Crank Brothers one, the sprung mechanism is part of the body itself. It doesn't rotate or anything. The actual jaws actually move around on the body itself. And last up is the Eastern Flatboy. Now this is an ancient pedal. This is probably 10, 15 years old maybe. Um, one of the earliest decent flat pedal designs around on the market. This has never been serviced. I've had these from the beginning. And to be fair, it still feels good, but we're gonna take it apart, give them a clean, and make sure they stay like that. Now, a lot of you out there might have some older pedals. If you do, they're gonna be working something along the lines of these. So hopefully this will be helpful for you. Okay, like any maintenance job, you're gonna need a selection of tools to do this. So nothing too specialist here, so let's have a little look. Uh, well, first up, if you're doing the Crank Brothers pedals, you will need one of those refresh kits if you wanna take all the bearings out and replace them. You can just strip them down. I'm gonna show you how to do that and give them a clean. Uh, you'll need a mallet with a protective end, like a rubber mallet or a wooden mallet. You'll need some decent grease. You'll need some thread lock for putting them back together again. You'll need a wet lube. Everyone laughs when I say wet lube, but you don't want a dry lube on your pedals. You want a wet lube on there to really get inside the springs and stuff. You'll need some Allen keys. Now, I always use just the regular part multi-tools. Um, they work really well for me and they will work really well for you. I'd like to use one of these little Topeak ratchet rockets. The reason for that is I don't actually have a box spanner at home. I tend to use sockets instead. Box spanner is useful for getting into the access of the pedals. Um, a pick for removing uh, bits and pieces on the inside. That's a custom one done for me by Calvin at Park Tool, which I absolutely love. Uh, some sockets for pushing in the bearings accordingly on the Crank Brothers pedals, an eight mil Allen key, an adjustable spanner, a seven mil and a 10 mil open-ended spanner. And interestingly, Crank Brothers recommend you use a knife blade. Um, I always keep a few old blunt ones for stuff like this. We'll get to that in a bit and I'll show you why. Um, there we go, that's the tools for the job. Let's get cracking, shall we? Okay, so first pedal, let's do the Eastern. This is gonna represent any sort of average flat pedal. It's pretty simple. Gonna get it in the vise first. We're gonna do this kind of real time and I'm gonna shoot some cut-ins separately just so you can see in a bit closer detail what's going on. Okay, so pedal is in the vise. Six mil Allen key takes that end cap off. It's normally a six or a five depending on what model. Uh, in this case, you'll find that the actual cap doesn't come off through this um, outside hole in the pedal. You have to sort of carefully reach in and just grab it through there. I've got no shop towel on my work surface, but the work surface is clean. What's important to say is always make sure you lay your the parts out in this sort of exploded order so you're ready to put them back in again. This is where my drill comes in handy, just to remove this to get access on the inside there. And there we go, and it's a magnetic end, so 
catches that quite nicely. Happy days. Now at this point, the pedal body should slide off the axle. I'm gonna go slowly in case it's, oh yeah, that is pretty gunky. Okay, so I just need to give this a decent clean on the inside. In fact, I'm gonna see if I can get that bearing out so I can inspect it. You should just push out of the body. Yeah, and it's out it comes quite easily. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna give this a good wipe down now with a rag. I'm gonna use a bit of disc brake cleaner on it just to make sure I can get any of that nasty grease off that's been there for a long time. I'm gonna put some fresh stuff back in. Now it's important just to look at the surfaces on it because a bearing rotates around on this. I'm gonna make sure that everything is in good condition. It's a really, really old set of pedals and it just needs a good clean really. I mean, as you can see, that is in pretty good condition considering its age. As you can probably tell, I'm not that fussed about the outside of these at this stage. This is more about just making sure the axle is good on the inside. Now a good thing to do is just to run a bit of rag or a bit of shop towel through that. I like to use a screwdriver, but you want to be careful you don't scratch any of the inside. That helps get all like, the grime out from the inside there. There we go, just whittle that on the inside there just to clean it up. There's a bearing at one end to support the axle and a bush at this end. There's no scoring on it and I'm shocked. It's in great condition, so it doesn't need replacing. But if yours does, they're just spare parts that are available from your bike shop uh, or directly from the manufacturer or distributor. Okay, so hopefully you can see this okay. There is the pedal. Um, that silver bit there on the axle, that's where the bush actually um, rotates around. That's where it's going to stay smooth. The other end is where that bearing goes. There's the bearing, there's the adjustment nut, and there is the little cap that goes in the end. That's all that's inside a lot of pedals. They're pretty simple, just revolves on you replacing the things like these little bearings when they need to be. But this one, miraculously, is still okay. So we're just gonna pop it back inside with a fresh load of grease. Okay, so first, first let's just get this bearing back in place. It just sits neatly on the inside there. Then I'm gonna pop some grease straight into the body itself. No need to go crazy. The axle then pushes through and that will help purge some of that grease through that bearing. There we go. As expected, some grease has come out the other end there. Then all I need to do is get that preload nut back in place. So I'm just gonna push that in here. I'm just gonna put the pedal back in the uh, vise here. It really is this simple. So on this one, I'm just gonna use my drill just to send this home. Just gonna be careful not to overdo it. There we go. And that is all that's needed. Now we're gonna have a little inspect of the body itself afterwards. Now something I like to do on all my pedals is just put a little bit of grease on this end cap here. In fact, I'll hold it off to camera just so you can see. Just in here, this is where you get um, some standing water sometimes under this cap. So I'm actually gonna put some grease inside that cap and pop it in a place there. It just helps keep water at bay and hopefully they'll keep going for just as long as I have done in the first place. Six mil Allen key just to send that home. There we go. And that will grease those threads at the same time. Nicely done. Okay, with regards to the body, this one is so old that all the pins are actually kind of distorted. So I probably could get these out we be using some sort of a pair of locking pliers, something like that to pull them out, but there is sufficient grip still on this pedal. So I'm not actually gonna do that, but you may wanna do that on yours if you've got access to any spare grub screws or pins. But as it is, these are dirty, but the axle's clean, and the axle's greased and it works. Good to go. Right, next up. Okay, next pedal, we're gonna do the Shimano one. Same thing applies, essentially you have to get the axle out of the body. So, a little bit different on this one though, because of the fact that you don't undo a nut on the other end of the pedal, you undo it like this. I'm just gonna show you. So, give me a second, just change the camera angle so you can see it in closer detail and I'll talk you through it. Okay, so the Shimano body, you have to undo this nut here. Now, if you look closely, you'll see it says Titan on it, so I'm obviously gonna go the opposite way. I'm gonna put this in the vise, but just to loosen it first, I'm gonna use the adjustable spanner just to, uh, Carefully undo that nut, just to take the worst off. There we go, so that is loose now. But it's gonna make it a bit easier if I just put it in the vise. So, just gonna put this in those soft closed jaws. 
That is looking pretty gunky under there. A couple more turns and then that should, here we go. Oof, look at the muck on that. Okay, so unlike the other axle, there was just the axle unit that span inside the pedal. The bearings are housed inside this piece here. And as you can see, that is pretty disgusting. But something especially cool about the Shimano ones is they use old school cup and cone style bearings. They, they are loose bearings on the inside of here. I don't know if you can see them rotating on the inside there. And it's funny, like although this is a little bit loose uh, and it looks disgusting, it's still rolling quite smoothly. So all this really needs is a good clean. Now I'm not gonna take this apart because I know what I'm like, I'm gonna lose all the ball bearings under the work surface or something. So you can, obviously you can take this apart, but it is a little bit fiddly. I'm just gonna give it a damn good cleaning and basically purge loads of fresh grease all the way back through that. And then clean the body up, check everything's tight on the surface, check it for damage, um, and then put it back together. Um, all right, so a minute ago I said I was just gonna give the axle a quick clean, flush out the stuff that's in there, all the bad gunk, but I couldn't help myself of actually taking it apart. This was just gonna be my Crank Brothers pedal service and showing you how to do other ones. Yeah, I may as well show you the internals now, hadn't I? Check this out. Okay, so here we've got the pedal body itself, which is pretty clean now. Uh, I've cleaned up all the springs, all that sort of stuff, and it cleaned up the inside, so it's actually ready to, to uh, receive the axle back in. This is the actual axle. It's a chrome wallet axle. It's got threads on the top there. Interestingly, uh, because they're right and left pedals, the threads actually go the opposite ways, so basically they don't undo. Uh, just the same reason your pedals have opposite way threads to what you might expect them to. Uh, there's a little rubber grommet here. Then you've got the actual locking collar that goes, that closes it into the pedal. You've got this little sleeve, you've got a little Delrin sort of spacer, and you've got the two locking nuts on the top, and you've got 24 bearings, uh, 12 at each end of this component here. Well, there you go. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with that too long because this video actually was about me trying to do my own pedals, and I was just gonna show you some other ones, but that's the internals of the Shimano pedals. I'm gonna bosh them back together now, flush the body out with some fresh grease, get loads of grease pumping through there, and show you the last steps just to make sure you take care of them. Uh, then I'm finally gonna do my own pedals. <laughs> Earlier on I said the pick was actually one of my favorite tools, uh, if I could just back get it there on camera. Um, one of the reasons why is it's actually magnetic, so check this out, I'll focus on that bearing there. Dink. Super useful for putting things like this back together, which otherwise would be a real pain because these things are tiny. Okay, so there we go, there's one axle and inner gubbins fully cleaned and greased, taking all those bearings out which I didn't intend on doing. To be honest, you don't always need to do it. You can just put a load of grease into the actual pedal body and that grease itself, when you put the axle back in, will purge all of this stuff straight back out again. But nonetheless, it was good to do it. So next up, just before I put that back in the body, I wanna just make sure the body is nice and clean. And I wanna make sure that all the screws on the top are actually in place and they've got enough thread lock on them. Um, basically, given a visual inspection, everything's where it should be. The springs look okay. Um, they're nice and clean now, they just need a little bit of oil on them. This is where I use the wet oil uh, just to get onto those inner workings of the mechanism. Now something just to note, if you're gonna do this at home, if you're gonna undo these screws on the top, be cautious of the fact that this one on this side is actually holding the jaw in place. Now if I just manipulate the jaw just with a screwdriver for a second, you'll see, this, you'll see it's a, resting on that plate there, on the far side. So by taking that out, the plate is actually gonna snap shut, so just be cautious. I'm just gonna take these screws out one by one, make sure they've got enough thread lock on and put them back on because everything is in good shape. But um, yeah, just a bit of advice for you there. So, one by one, I'm gonna take these out, bit of thread lock on each one, and put it back in again. Nicely done. Tiny blob of thread lock on that one. And in it goes. I'll wipe the excess off afterwards. Okay, so now it's time to just get some grease back into the body. Get that axle, which has been all cleaned now and splurge that through. And that's gonna force grease back through the system nicely. There we go, a bit of resistance pushing through the grease, but that's good because it pushes it all through the bearings. Now it's time to just Tighten it up. Nicely done. 
And just the last thing to say is, I'm gonna be putting some wet oil on the springs here, wet lubricant. It's a ceramic lube, you can use whatever you fancy. I use this because it tends to stay in place a bit better. And I'm just gonna run it into some of the working parts on the inside. And actually these will be left sometime before they're used, so it can really start soak in place there. It's thin, but at the same time, it's viscous enough that it will stay in place. You don't want to attract too much dirt and grime to the inside of these, but uh, there we go. That's the set of Shimano's done. More importantly, time for the crank pedals. This is what we came here for. So I'm going to quickly take these apart. I guess we'll try and do this time lapse because they're actually it's quite fiddly and I don't want the video to be too uh, fiddly. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so the crank pedal is pretty simple. You've got a six mil cap on the end and then underneath that is an eight mil nut and that once that's taken off, you can slide the axle out. The bearings are on the inside and to access those, you have to take the pedal apart. It comes into two pieces and the spring mechanism comes out of the middle there. So let's get this six mil undone first. So the axle comes out now. Oh yeah, <laughs> that'll be why. That's a whole winter's worth of muck and minging stuff on there. So I'm just gonna leave that on the Allen key actually and make it handy for a minute time. Note the little rubber seal on there. You quite often need to replace those. Um, there we go. There's two stage part of the seal. There's the outer bit that just pushes onto the body and then there's the inner bit which is like a double lip seal. So in with the Torx key now. And you can see the body slides apart. Oh, that comes off the middle there. All the dust and dirt comes out as well. Come on, off you come. There we go. Push the bolts out. And there we have it. There is a Crank Brothers pedal in the main parts you need to know about. Obviously it goes without saying, all this needs to be cleaned up. Uh, that is the jaws that go in the middle. These are good as gold, they'll keep on working. One of the cool things about these is you don't need to add any tension to them, they just stay as they are. As you can see there, they're filthy in the middle, so I'm gonna give that a good old clean. Same goes for the body. Now there are the bearings on the inside, so I'm gonna change these quickly on mine. You need basically a knife blade, is what Crank Brothers recommend to take these out. You can use a pick, basically I'll just demonstrate with the knife blade how you can just get into the side there. That's what they're uh, telling you to do. Obviously you need to be careful. This will damage them when you take them out. So just be careful. There we go. So that is one of those little bushes that go on the inside here. And time to take the rest apart. And you've got to note that on one side is a big one, on the other side is a smaller one. So that is much thinner. So when you lay your stuff out on the bench there, just make sure you do it in order so you remember that small one correlates to this side, big one correlates to that side. Now there is a bearing in here as well. Just got to get this knocked out. So in the actual up, upgrade kit, you get a little, little thing to knock these out. You get one of these with it. Use that with your mallet and you can send it straight out. And then as you can see here, I have a selection of nice fresh bits to put back in. You've got that double lip seal there. You've got the end cap, you've got the bearings and what's still in the back here is the Igus bearing that goes in the other end. Okay, time to just get that bearing out, give that a firm tap. There we go, and it's out. In fact, it should sit there. Okay, now just creep on the inside with my pick, just take the little rubber O-ring out, so that would go there on that one. I'm gonna mirror that, do the same on the other one so I know exactly where they are for when I Put the new bits back together. Now it's time to just uh, get this bearing out of here. There we go. Okay, so that is everything out. Time to give it all a little bit of a clean. Make sure it's all nice. Okay, so the rubber o-ring just pushes into the body there. Same on the other side, thicker plate that goes into this as well. In with the next one. 
There we go, that is ready to receive this back in. Now I'm just gonna put a bit of grease on mine. You don't actually have to do this with Crank Brothers pedals, but grease is always good. Just a little smidgen on the inside there. Another reason to wear protective gloves. This grease isn't super bad on your skin as long as you wash it off or preferably if you use a barrier cream beforehand would be the better way of doing it. Okay, so now I just have to get this back in. Uh, I did it that way around because I'm actually looking down the back of the camera here, so made it a little bit harder just to line them up. Okay, so there we are. Um, a bit of thread lock on the two bolts that have got to go into these two holes here. And then that is back in one piece and then we'll get the axle in. Okay, now just put a bit of grease into the pedal body itself. Just gonna purge some in there. Don't need too much because a little goes a long way in something like this. Now just gonna slide that carefully in place. Make sure that that is seated. And there we go, just need to get that little retaining nut into place there. The old trusty mini ratchet tool. Absolutely love these little things, so good. Oh yeah, a million times better, brilliant. Okay, now it's just time to get, don't need to put any thread lock on here because there's already some on there, just the cap back on the end. How have you found this video? Definitely a weird one for me. Uh, kind of good fun actually, I guess doing it in a bit of a dodd's eye view. There we go, there's a pedal, nice and serviced. So there we go, so I've done three pedals there. Actually gonna get the other ones done behind the scenes now, but um, well, we're done. Oh, well, there we go. That was the Dodd's eye view uh, on overhauling my pedals and a couple others just for good measure. Uh, don't forget the main differences between the two are some pedals have an axle that spins within the bearings with the bearings mounted in the pedals, like the crank ones. And it's the other way around for those Shimano's. A little bit more fiddly if you want to do a full service. In fact, if you want to see me do a full breakdown on a pair of Shimano pedals, I'll get the macro lens out and we'll do that because that's quite a lot more detail to that. But it's a really good thing to do, uh, especially if you're in isolation or you're just bored and want to just stay in the workshop. If you want to see any more Dodd's Eye View videos, uh, let me know what you'd like to see. Um, in that case, over and out for me.